Good afternoon, everyone. Ever heard of the Circumpolar Agricultural Conference? They're looking for abstract submissions at the moment. Your safety zone is going to be where you can have reliable power as the temperatures start to drop. Interactive map of where the global coal plants are. And check out this sunset with the color underneath the clouds. And how far along are you learning how to grow some of your own vegetables or sprouts? Trueleafmarket.com. Heirloom and Organic Seeds, the ADAPT 2030 link is below in the description box as well as the links to tonight's images and stories and the link to Mini Ice Age Conversations, the tri-weekly podcast with more in-depth discussion and interviews about the Grand Solar Minimum and how these rising food prices and the tumultuous weather is going to affect your life. ARCUS, the Arctic Research Consortium of the United States. They also run the Circumpolar Agricultural Conference, otherwise known as Arctic Farming. Now, these are the types of solutions that we should be focusing on, and this type of research is integral to shifting grow zones and also substituting and growing other species of plants. As we shift hardiness zones, you've seen what's happening with the jet stream so far across the planet. We are absolutely on tap for a very cold winter. It just snowed in Japan. They hadn't had snow in Japan since 1972. I'll get that on the next video. But Arcus is actually looking for abstract submissions. If you have any ideas about circumpolar agriculture, they want to hear from you. This next conference is all about new thinking, local agriculture, Arctic zones. Innovation and perspectives. Now that's real interesting right now that they're moving into this realm when we're intensifying into the grand solar minimum and traditional agriculture is being affected. I tell you what, when the harvest comes up, you're going to see these futures prices jump. Wheat jumped $17 in a single day last week. When farmers are really taking a look to see where we're getting toward the end of the growth season, not anywhere close to what was forecast by the USDA. So the 10th Circumpolar Agriculture Conference it's organized under the framework of the CAA, the Circumpolar Agricultural Association. They could just change it to Arctic Agricultural Association. But interesting how food security and sustainability in different regions and countries. That's the very last sentence. Notice how important that is in the whole conference this year. They know what's going on. You should also be paying attention about the crop yields this year. If you learn one thing that's going to be the most valuable thing to learn in your life beyond learning how to grow your own food is to learn how they book that into the silos and what the futures prices mean on how much yield there is coming out of the fields. Specifically, look for oats, wheat, corn, and soy. These are the majors that will be affected along with rice in the U.S. Arkansas, down. Too much flooding. But coming into this, global coal power. Now, whatever agriculture is out there, it requires electricity to process it. Now, this is an interactive map. I left the links below so you can go in and look at the region you're in, the country you're in, and you can really zoom straight in and they show you by the county in the U.S. or by the province in different countries across the planet. Those white circles, those are going to be mothballed facilities. Yellow, operational, but you just don't see too many new plant coal power plants across the planet anywhere except over in Asia. Now, taking a look at Europe, especially the UK. How dangerous is this? We're going into an extended cold period for at least a couple of decades. And they're trying to base everything on wind, which will be more unreliable as the jet stream shift and also solar, which is going to be extremely unreliable as more cloud cover comes in. Same with Northeastern Europe up there, Denmark, Germany. I tell you what, it's my own opinion, but I think they're walking out on the plank on this one here because they're tied up and going to be fed to the sharks when push comes to shove and they really need that power a couple years from now and it's brutally cold and these renewable energy sources aren't enough to cover the actual demand, then what? We saw this happen in Australia this year already as well. It pushed prices up to what, 14,000 Australian dollars for a megawatt of power. That comes out to about $14 per kilowatt. I'm paying around five cents. Do you see the stark difference in the economy that's going to wipe out an entire tier of spending if we get into these higher prices just because renewables cost more to generate if they even have enough for the demand? Now jumping over to Asia, 
Look at all the power plants that are planned over there. Japan as well, Korea, China, of course, India. Now, I agree that there's an enormous amount of pollution in the atmosphere due to some bad actors out in this whole sphere of power generation. The sloppy, greedy, hey man, gypsum, that can be sold as a byproduct. But these scrubbers, they are just too lazy and too greedy. Those are the bad actors, but the rest of the world that operates with clean coal and clean gas, these are going to be your safety zones. I'm telling you right now, the places that will not go down in this power demand, all-time record demand, those are going to be the places that have a power station near them fired by coal or gas. This is your safety zone. And also talking about extreme, excellent photo here, Mateo World aircraft taking a look at the sunset from under the clouds beauty in nature something soft compared to what we've seen in the world's weather over the last few months winter's going to arrive early the snows in japan in august are showing us the future thanks for watching hope you got something out of the video you can also join me on steam at adapt 2030 where I post all of this with images and text in more of a blog post format.